I can't remember a time where I wasn't like obsessed with <laughs> movies and monsters and um, and this whole world. I can't remember a time where it wasn't it didn't consume me. My dad tells me stories of me drawing portraits of people when I was two like not just scribbling like he like he, he he was fond of saying like he could see I would draw faces and he he would be able to he, you could say you could actually get the expression on the person's face when I was like two years old um, having daughters now I can I can kind of see how that's possible I mean my you know my two-year-old is is now because of me I guess obsessed with makeup so she She'll go in there and play in the mirror with makeup and everything. And, and, I, and mine wasn't so much makeup at the time. It was more drawing. I would draw everything. I drew, I just was, at the time it was Kiss, because we're talking about the 70s. So Kiss were kind of makeup-y, you know, and I was, I, I was into Kiss and I was into dinosaurs and monsters. But for some reason, I, I remember, you know, watching, you know, old, you know, Sunday, you know, morning creature features. And, and that just really, you know, getting to me and I just, you know, just would draw Frankenstein and just to draw that stuff uh, you know everybody has their movie everybody has their Frankenstein or Planet of the Apes or I remember being you know obsessed with King Kong but before that I was obsessed with young Frankenstein I, I can trace it to young Frankenstein because I was in, I was seven years old and I, I went to a book fair in the first grade and on the, in the book fair and on the tables with all the little paperback books was a book and it was a little paperback book. It's called Movie Monsters. And, and it was, there was pictures of like Dracula and Frankenstein and all the universal monsters. And there was a picture of Peter Boyle from Young Frankenstein. This is 1974 when the movie came out. So it was obviously like a tie-in with the movie. And, and I, bought, I had to buy the book. It's like a dollar or 25 cents. I bought the book just to draw the young Frankenstein. But what was in the book was how to put on your own little monster play and how to do your own monster makeups to be in the play and how to make up all your friends as Frankenstein and Dracula and how to turn yourself from Dr. Jekyll into Mr. Hyde with a red light and a red pen, red makeup. And, um, and, I, and I obsessed and I started doing it. I made myself a paper mache Frankenstein head and and I did all that stuff. And it was until a couple years later when I started finding the Dick Smith stuff out and I started, I came across famous monsters in the magazine stand and that just, that just set me on my path. But it was that little seven-year-old book, you know, that I, I saw and, and, I, and I never turned back. I was obsessed with it from then on. The good news is I was part of the generation that became aware of it when, when makeup and makeup effects really started to happen. When Star Wars came out, I was like 12. And so that obviously blew me away. And what's great about a magazine like Famous Monsters is, God bless them, they didn't only have an article on Star Wars, but there would be an article on Rick Baker. So you would read an article on somebody who did, you know, makeup and created the masks and everything. And so I started just arbitrarily taking my G.I. Joes and sculpting you know, I sculpted, I remember taking my big gym doll and sculpting a gorilla, like, because I saw Rick Baker sculpting the King Kong, you know, and I wanted to sculpt like a roaring King Kong head on my G.I. Joe. My dad's a plumber. I come from a big Italian family, all builders, contractors, plumbers. So that was the way I was destined to go. But my dad, God bless him, did not want me to be, he goes, look, if you don't have to be under uh, a trailer in covered in <laughs> then you, then, and you can do this and make money at it, then by all means, be an artist. And he would read the magazines with me and, and he realized that this is a profession. Unlike my young brain, you know, I just wanted to do it. He's like, you can actually do this for a living. And so um, pushed me to pursue it. And, so that, and that, so that was it. I mean, I just, again, I, I don't remember a time not thinking this was what I was gonna do. You know, I remember thinking that if, I, if it didn't work out, cause it must be really hard to do it, and, and maybe I wasn't professional enough to do it, or I would never get there, that if I didn't do that, my fallback would be like painting movie posters or cartooning. Like that would be my two. <laughs> because they still involve like movies. And I remember telling in, in junior high, my art teacher, I remember telling him that like, look, I go, you know, I think I'm gonna get into movie posters because I think there's this weird profession where you can make monsters, but I don't think I'll ever be good enough to do that. <laughs>
like, but I think movie posters I could do, you know? Because it seemed like a more of a real job. Like, because at the time they had painted posters, which were awesome. I don't have that anymore, really. <laughs>
and he went out and rehearsed the fight with Bert for like an hour and came back and his bald cap <laughs> all lifted up. And, uh, and I, I quickly learned how to, you know, <laughs> probably a good idea not to rehearse after you put a bald cap on somebody. So I, I fixed the bald cap as best I could. Um, and, and, uh, and that just was the beginning of a night full of, of wonder and, and learning. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I realized at that moment I would take notes. And so I started taking notes. Um, I learned a lot that first night. I'll tell you one thing that fascinates me about this business and that, uh, and maybe it's true for all businesses. My dad used to compare plumbing when I was living at home that he would compare plumbing to makeup, uh, the makeup profession. I go, dad, it's, there's, it's nothing like plumbing. <laughs> They're completely different. He goes, you know what, a professional is just, it can be just like another profession. I go, you know, you're dealing with, you know, you're dealing with clients, you're dealing with people who are paying you money. He goes, it's, you're dealing with all different, he goes, I deal with all different kinds of people, you're gonna wind up having the same problems I have. And I go, trust me, I'm, I'm not gonna be in a ditch and uh, I'm not gonna be covered with And, you know, cut to, uh, you know, working on a movie like The Blob and I was literally in a ditch covered with and think, laughing to myself thinking, oh my God. My dad was so right. Um, and, and, you know, and, and I didn't have a housewife standing over me yelling at me. I had a director standing over me yelling at me, but it was basically the same. But, but um, it brings me to the biggest disappointments that I've had in my career um, have led to some of the most amazing, successful highlights of my career. And, 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 and quite literally, I mean, you know, I've worked hard to be, you know, you know, as good an artist as I can and as, as pleasant as I can and have as good a, you know, personality or um, a good attitude uh, as I can project, you know, I, you know, pride myself on it. Yet, you know, I've made enemies like anybody and, and I've gotten people pissed off and I've gotten fired off of jobs. <laughs> um, and getting fired off a job, off of, of one job, led me, you know, and again, one of the lowest points in my career and thinking I would never work in this town again, led to me getting hired on another job, which changed my career. I got um, fired off of a movie um, because of a series of events that just wasn't going my way and just one thing after another. And I got, you know, basically my hands tied behind my back and it didn't work out. And I, I was out of a job and called up to complain to my good friend V. Neal, who uh, then said, you know, screw those guys. Come work for me on this movie I'm doing called Man on the Moon. And it's where I met Jim Carrey. And you know, if not for getting fired off that one job, I wouldn't have met Jim Carrey, and I wouldn't have stuck with Jim Carrey, and I wouldn't have gotten an Academy Award. So it's amazing how one moment can lead to and snowball to something else. So you know, I often used to say to myself, you know, at the lowest points of my career, and like I said, there's been a couple. <laughs> um, I just project myself forward. I'm like, you know, four months from now things are gonna be better. Things will be a little bit different because there are many low points, you know, I guess in anybody's career. And f you, more often than not, four months later, I would look back and I'd try to isolate a moment and say, it's true, uh, things are so much better now. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I always try to keep, I always try to pass that information on because it's pretty important, I think. I've said it, uh, you know, I've lectured um, in front of big groups of people, artists and makeup artists, and, and inevitably you're always asked, you know, what parting advice would you give young artists? And, and ultimately, I don't think there's anything more important than having a great attitude and a good personality because I've seen amazing makeup artists, uh, genius artists, sculptors, painters, uh, designers, who you just cannot stand to be in the same room with. And, and um, uh, I would want to hire them, and, and they don't work well with people. Yet I've seen people that are just a pleasure to be around and just awesome and fun, and you know, they're okay. They're artistically, you know, they get by, but you know what, they work, they work all the time, you know? And, and ultimately it comes down to who do you want to spend time with? You know, when I'm hiring on a movie, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of obviously I want somebody who's gonna do the work, but I want somebody who I'm going to be able to ha like having around, you know, who the actors are going to like. Because there's nothing worse than, than hiring the best makeup artist, the best hairstylist, and you bring in a bunch of actors, and an actor will come up to you, and it's happened to me many times, an actor will come up to me and said, I don't want that person touching me again. I don't like that person. And, 
it's not a fun situation to be in, and sometimes big actors, you know. Um, so uh, that's something I pride myself in, and I work really hard at it. You know, keep the good attitude, be flexible. Some people, you know, horror at the at the term production friendly, but but um, you know what? It's their movie. You know, it's the actor's face. It's the director's movie. I'm there to do the very best work I can, um, make it look as cool as I can, but give them what they want. I, I've worked for many people who have, who have just dug their heels in the sand and said, I'm doing what I want to do. This is what's better, this is what's right, and I'm going to do it this way. And they've made enemies of everybody, and, and they don't work, and they don't work again. And it's like, there's, there's, there's a definitely a fine line you can walk where, where you can do the best work you can, but give the people what they want, and ultimately, you know, it's why people go to the movies. People want to see what they want, and and um, and I think uh, having an attitude is 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 bottom line is the most important thing.